So these are the assembly instructions for my trifold baseball card. I'm going to build the cover of my card first. So these three panels are exactly the same size and two of them are identical with the horizontal cutouts and the little notch. And this one is just a plain square. This is a craft colored 110 pound cardstock, so it's quite thick. I'm still going to layer it up to make it even sturdier. So I'm just going to glue these two layers together. So to decorate the panel, I have a green piece that goes at the top. I'm just putting glue on the underside of it and gluing it to the top of my panel. So for my pull mechanism, I have the L-shaped pull and then I have a reinforcement piece just for the bottom. And then I have the decorative piece. Now the decorative piece is out of foil craft board and I've cut the letters out of vinyl and applied them to my pull tab. So that makes a nice sturdy pull. When you're applying the letters, place the vinyl letters so that when the pull tab is in position, none of the letters shows. I have my ball player. I've got two layers of the yellow and that's just to make him a little more sturdy. I've applied black vinyl as my top layer. I'm just putting glue on the underside of the player and then I'm just going to glue the second layer to him. And again, this is just to make him nice and sturdy. So next I have these two pieces that I'm going to fold the exact same way. So I've already folded one of them. The score lines on them are as follows. There are two score lines on one end and two score lines on the other. So I'm just folding down on those two middle score lines, which are going to create a square on the top. And then for the two other score lines, I'm folding those outwards, like so. Well, I think it's so that it is in like a U position. I'm putting glue in that center square, and then I'm folding the sides down. I'm going to do that for both of them. It looks like a little picnic table. So next, I'm going to bring the legs of my picnic table together, thread them through the slot on my card base, like so. And I'm going to flip my piece over and then separate them again. And then I have some red line tape. So with those flaps flattened, I'm adhering red line tape over both of them, like so. So now I have these four white circles cut out of craft board. I'm going to adhere two of them on top of those mo mechanisms that I just created. I've just adhered them to the back of both of those mechanisms. I'm putting more double-sided tape on the back of the one that's even with the notch. Now this is the underside of my card. I'm going to take my mechanism that says play ball. I want to place the rounded edge right at the edge of my card, like so. And I want my pull tab to be parallel with the edge of my card, like so. Now I'm just going to pull it out just to test the mechanism. I'm putting a piece of double-sided tape on top of that little craft board circle, removing the liner and being absolutely sure that it's right against the edge of that track. And just lay down. So when you pull it, they both come together like so. So now I'm looking at the front of my card and I'm gonna put glue on the bottom green square and my little dot on top. And then I have the last one of my little craft board circles. So it's going to go underneath my player, but I don't want it showing through. It's a little bit bigger than my player. I can have his foot go over the edge of this panel by a little bit under a quarter of an inch. If I use my craft mat as a guide, that white tab is going to show. I'm just going to trim the bottom of that white tab. I'm putting glue all over that green square and then placing that piece, the piece that I've just snipped on top. And what I do when I make these cards is I check every step of the way just to make sure everything still glides. I'm going to elevate my player, so I'm going to put a little bit of foam tape. And then I have my little foam plate. One layer is cardstock and the other is craft board. I'm just gluing it down at the end of my slider like so. So this piece is to camouflage the mechanism and it hovers on top of it. I'm going to put foam tape underneath it to give the mechanism the clearance it needs to work. I'm going to be positioning my red panel quarter of an inch away from both sides and from the bottom. So like this. So I've traced around the top, the bottom, and the sides. And that's going to show me where to put my foam tape. And I don't want my foam tape to show. So I've traced it in such a way so it's just under the border so you can't see my pencil marks. 
So I have these thin strips. I'm gluing them two by two, just stacking them up one on top of the other. I'm just putting glue at the back. I've got my pull tab half out and I want to position this so that it's just hovering right above my mechanism and as straight as I can get it. I'm going to do that for the bottom as well. Just putting glue on the underside and gluing this just right below my little circle. But my circle still needs enough clearance so that it slides back and forth. What that does, it shows me exactly where I can put my foam tapes. So I can put foam tape above this white piece, below this white piece, and then on the two ends here. Well, my foam tape isn't very thick, it's very thin, so I'm going to have to put a second layer just to be sure that my mechanism works properly. So now that I've built up my two layers of foam tape, I'm removing the liner. Then I'm going to take my panel, and I know that my panel has to match exactly the notch, and I want it as straight as possible. It's still sliding quite nicely. Now I'm going to adhere my ball player. I'm removing the liner on the foam tape. I'm just making sure that his foot here just goes over the edge just by a little bit. And so he slides along past the plate. So now I have my base layer, which is the same color as the color that's underneath my player so that the cutout is less noticeable. So I'm going to flip my piece over. So again, I'm going to put foam tape all along, avoiding the mechanism as much as possible. The mechanism goes all the way here. So I know that it's okay to have foam tape here, all the way above here, and then a little bit along the edge here, along the bottom. And again, I'm going to be putting two layers of foam tape because my foam tape is very, very thin. If you have thicker foam tape, you can probably get away with only putting one layer. And now I'm just removing the backing from my foam tape. Just to be safe, I went with three layers of foam tape. So I'm going to flip this over. This panel gets adhered exactly to that back panel. And then I have my little pennant. So I have happy birthday. You could put happy Father's Day or however you want to personalize this. And the sentiment is cut out of vinyl. So I'm just putting glue on the underside of it, positioning it on that red panel. And then I have my little baseball and my baseball has the little lines. That, those little delicate lines are actually cut out of vinyl. Look at how small that is. And hear that like so. So that's the cover of my card done. Now you have plenty of room up here to personalize it, putting the person's name. Next, we're gonna move on to the card base. So my card base consists of two pieces. This is 80 pound card stock. So I have folded on the center score line for the largest panel. And for the smaller one, I folded down on uh, the score line to create a tab. So this tab is actually where I join my two panels. So I'm just putting glue all over it, gluing that larger panel right above the score line, and the edges have to be flush. And then I have the panel that goes on the top and the panel that goes on the bottom. I'm just going to glue those down, trying to keep an even border all the way around. So now I'm gonna work on one of my two pop-up elements. I have my center ring for my pop-up element and it has a tab on the bottom. I'm gonna glue two other rings on top of it. So I have my first ring. I want to make sure that the sides are flush and I have two of those to glue down. And then I'm going to flip my piece over. Then I have two other rings I'm going to glue on the other side of that tab piece. And then I have two pieces of acetate. I'm just taking the protective lining off my acetate. Now this is Cricut acetate, so it has lining on both sides. So I'm putting glue all around that circular frame and then I'm putting my piece of acetate on top. Then I'm going to take one of my decorative circles, I've cut this out of bright yellow, and I'm just going to glue that on top of my acetate layer. You could definitely use double-sided tape here. I decided to go with glue. I just have to make sure that it dries completely before I move on to the next phase. I've cut my ball player out of foil craft board, which has brown on the underside. So I have cut out the same image again, but a mirror image of the ball player. So I'm just going to glue those two pieces together. 
I'm going to work on the other mechanism. First, I'm going to work with this piece that looks like a backwards L. I'm going to fold down on the score lines that are on both ends, so these create tabs for me. There's a score line that runs downwards here, and then there are two score lines that form a triangle just above here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to fold down on this score line. You want to fold down on the triangle. So you're just bringing this whole panel forwards and then just folding it so that it creates a little angled fold up here. And then you're going to and then do it in the opposite direction. And then I'm going to unfold it completely. You want to keep this square towards the back and you want to apply a little bit of pressure in the center fold of that triangle and it collapses down like so. And then I'm just reinforcing both those folds. And next, I'm going to put a little bit of glue just in the triangle. You've got the line in the center and then a diagonal line and a line at the top. So you want to put glue just in that area. And then I'm folding the square panel downwards. And then I'm just going to push from the right hand side and I want this triangle to collapse on itself like so. And this is what creates that rotating motion. So I'm just re reinforcing that fold so that slotted area falls to the front and that triangle collapses inwards like so. So this is the second part of my mechanism. I'm just going to fold down on all the score lines. So next I'm going to glue in the smaller of the two mechanisms. I have it flattened in this position. So from the top it looks like this. And from the bottom you've got that flap like so. So I'm putting glue from the score line of my tab to the edge. I have my card base. I'm positioning that tab right against the score line and close enough to the edge of my card. And then I'm going to close down I'm applying a little bit of pressure so that that glue takes. And so now I'm going to open my card and I'm going to put glue on the tab that's sticking upwards towards the center of my piece. So from the score line to the end like so. And then I'm going to close down my card. So when you open it, this piece rotates. I'm going to put red line tape in a reverse L shape. I don't want any adhesive in this part of my mechanism in this smaller square. So I've put my red line tape in position. Now I'm going to install my second mechanism. I have a thin tab at the top and a larger tab at the bottom. I'm just going to put glue from the score line to the edge of my piece. And then I'm positioning it just about an inch in from the edge of my card. As much as possible, I want the edge of my mechanism to be parallel with the side of my card. I'm going to fold down my mechanism on the second score line. So you've got the score line for the tab and then the second score line. But I'm going to put glue from the score line to the edge. I'm laying my piece flat and then I'm closing my card. I'm just applying a little pressure to make sure that that glue takes. So it creates a little bench Next, I have my piece of acetate, taking the liner off my red line tape on my mechanism, and I'm adhering my acetate to my red line tape. As I open my card, the acetate moves upwards. So I have my little hill, I'm just going to, I'm adhering my two layers together, and then I have my ball cap and my baseball. I'm just adhering those to my piece, so I'm just putting glue all over the vertical part of that little bench piece that I created and placing my piece down on my card like so. The bottom is right up against my bench piece and then I'm folding down and I'm applying the pressure to spread that glue. I have some red line tape on the back of my baseball player. I'm going to remove the liner. I need to position him so that when the card's closed he fits inside the card. I'm just sort of guiding my player as I'm closing down my card. So when you open the card, your baseball player pops up. So 
So now I'm going back to my acetate from before. I'm putting two little pieces of red line tape. I've already taken the liner off my tape and I'm positioning my player onto my acetate like so. So the red line tape will show, but it's gonna be at the back so it's not as apparent. And then I'm just putting a few of these little red stars. I'm taking my second piece of acetate and removing the liner. I'm putting glue all around the circular frame. I'm gluing down my piece of acetate. And then I've got my decorative rim. I'm putting glue all along the perimeter of it. And just gluing that down. So here's my final mechanism. So I folded down on all the score lines, and there are many of them. And if you fold your piece in half, that's going to show you the score line that's the halfway mark. So you want to keep that in mind. You want to put glue on your last panel here, so from the last score line to the edge, and then fold it down so that it reaches the middle. You should have two panels here. And then you're going to do that for the other side as well. You're putting glue on that last panel, tucking it under, and then folding it to the middle. And then you want to fold upwards. I'm going to push down on those top scores and it creates two squares. And my mechanism is going to go between those two squares. In the V that's formed between those two squares, I'm going to put red line tape on either side. Now you could use glue here. Well, I just decided to use red line tape. I'm removing the liner on my red line tape and I'm positioning that tab at the bottom right in between that V and then I'm laying it flat like so. So only the bottom portion where I put that red line tape is sticking to my tab. So if you push it down, it looks like this. You can use glue here, but again, I'm gonna put red line tape from the score line to the fold on both sides. So I have my red line tape on the bottom for both sides. I'm going to remove the liner on my red line tape and I'm just taking note that this is the part that I want to go towards the back because you can see the tape. So I'm positioning this on my card so that it's centered horizontally. So there's an even amount on the right and on the left hand side. I want that nicely secure in my score line. And then I'm closing my card. And I'm applying pressure. Then I have three layers. This is where you can reach, write your message. You can even uh, get your Cricut to write a sentiment. So I'm just layering them up, trying to center them as best I can. And I'm gonna glue that down in the center part of my card. And then I have some players that I'm just gonna add here for extra decoration. My card folds down like so. This is, becomes the cover. So I'm going to glue down my base panel with my slider mechanism on top. I've kept this consistent for the two other panels as well. For this panel, I'm just gluing it down like so. And then for the back panel, I have my green panel here, which covers the seam nicely. And I'm going to glue this panel on top. So this is my baseball themed slider card with the two pop-up elements. 